Good afternoon. First, happy Teacher's Day to all of you. I'm sure we're all very proud of our teachers, and our teachers would want us to do well in life, and they want to be proud of us too. The SEBI chairperson, Ms. Madhabi Puri Butch, also had a very good education. I'm sure she had very, very good teachers. She went to top colleges. And I'm sure she is also hoping to please her teachers today on Teacher's Day. I want to give you a chronology and a see the, the chronology of events and give you a little bit more details today. And as I said in my tweet, there are lots of skeletons tumbling out of the cupboard of SEBI. Remember, SEBI is one of the nation's most important institutions. When we all talk about the 1991 economic liberalization under Dr. Manmohan Singh, we forget one of the important institutions that was set up under that program was the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI. So it's a very, very important organization. So the chairperson of SEBI has a hugely important role in the country. On the 10th of August, a foreign research firm issued a report that had allegations against SEBI chairperson and her family of investments in certain dubious offshore funds, which for which they said they had documentary evidence. Now, these, this allegation was made by a research firm from outside. It was not made by a political party. It was not made by any opposition party. It was an allegation against an individual and her family about conflict of interest. What happened? What was the response? <coughs> Cabinet ministers of the Modi government, BJP members of parliament came out and responded. Why? Why did BJP MPs and cabinet ministers respond to an allegation made by a foreign research firm on an individual, the chairperson of SEBI? The next day, the same research firm said we will provide more details. And they provided details of documents where they said, Miss Butch's private firm earned income when she was chairperson of SEBI. And she had a 99% stake in that company. So they asked for more details. What should have been done? There should have been an inquiry. We are not here to say whether those allegations are correct or incorrect. Neither can Ms. Butch say that. There should have been an independent inquiry done. No. Now what happened? There is something called the Indian Venture Capital Association, which is an industry body, and the Association of Mutual Fund Investors. All of you, I'm sure, have some investments in mutual funds. And that industry body, they came out and responded. Now, what is Indian Venture Capital Association and the Association of Mutual Fund Industries have to do with the allegation made by a foreign research firm against an individual? Who is asking them to respond? Were they under pressure to respond? Did somebody from Delhi make a call to them asking them to respond? Why? Now, let's move forward. On the 2nd of September, my colleague, Mr. Pavan Kera, had a press conference where he had some documentary evidence and he said that documents show that Ms. Badebi Puri Butch has earned income, or I think he used the word salary, but in earned income from two places when she was still the chairperson of SEBI. 
Now the response came. This time the response came from ICICI Bank because the allegation was that she earned income from ICICI while as chairperson of SEBI. Now ICICI is only indirectly implicated in this allegation. The primary person who's been accused in this allegation is Ms. Butch. But the primary person never responded. The company that is indirect, implicitly accused, responded. And the response was, these are stock options. Or somebody said, these are retirals. This is not salary. This is wealth. All these different terms were used. You know, you remember Mr. Vinod Rai, famously, for notional loss theory. He would have called this notional income. Whether it is stock options or retirals or dividends, it is income. This was from ICICI. What was the allegation? Even if it was stock option, it is she's earning income from ICICI stock. Who is regulating ICICI stock? Miss Madhubi Puri Butch. Is there a conflict or not? I'm earning income. Yes, I may have been given stock options much before. But my income depends on the stock price. Who's regulating the stock price? Me. Is that a conflict or not? There was a very clear conflict. Now, if there was a conflict, was this disclosed? Why was this conflict not resolved before she became chairperson? These are the questions to ask, not hide behind whether this is stock option or retirals or all these things. But I want to ask one question about that. Why did ICICI respond? I'll give you another uh, similar example. There was a lady, senior lady executive, very senior executive of ICICI Bank, Miss Chanda Kocher. There was an allegation against her. She was actually the CEO of ICICI Bank at that time. What, did, what was done at that time? She, steps as, she stepped aside. The board of ICICI constituted a committee under a former Supreme Court judge, and they did an inquiry. And that inquiry said, yes, she is culpable, and hence she resigned. This is what the same ICICI Bank did for a very similar executive at a senior position, very senior position, and both were, in some sense, peers, colleagues, Ms. Madhubi Bochan, Chanda Kocha. Why were there two different treatments? Why did ICICI Bank come out and defend, saying there is no, there is no issue? Whereas they did, they did not do that for Ms. Chanda Kocha, which was the right thing to do, set up an independent inquiry. So on the 3rd of September, my colleague again responded to ICICI Bank with more documents, with more details. And he also said, we have further evidence, further documents. Now, on the 4th of September, there's a news article that said 500 officers of SEBI have written a letter to the government of India saying that they cannot work in SEBI anymore under our leadership because the work environment is very toxic, abusive, and there is fear everywhere. This is under Ms. Madhavi Puri Butch's leadership, and 500 officers of SEBI have written this letter. These are not junior officers. This is not a, um, um, an unknown entity. This is a very important entity, SEBI. I am not saying they are right or wrong, but what was the response? SEBI responded today, SEBI responded today, saying these 500 officers are being incited by some external forces, by some outside forces. If 500 SEBI officers, you think, can be motivated by outside forces to complain, should they be officers in the first place? What are you saying? Are you demeaning your own officers, your own staff? Is this the status of SEBI today? 
the country's most important regulator. Now let's come to today. Today, there's another very damning news item. Again, remember, these are news reports. These are not Congress party allegations. These are news reports. And what does that news report say today? It said, Miss Madhavi Puri Butch actually did have two employments. When she was at ICICI, she also was employed in what is called a private equity fund, an investment fund called Greater Pacific Capital. So she did have two employers at the same time. Again, this is a news item. Now I was curious. I said, let me go look at Greater Pacific Capital. What is this Greater Pacific Capital? Because Please remember, I come from the industry. I have been in the fraternity. I have actually served on the secondary market committee and the primary market committee in SEBI when Ms. Butch was a whole time member. So I understand this a bit. It turns out that the Greater Pacific Capital, the private equity fund, one of the key members of the leadership team is Mr. Shorya Dawal the son of Mr. Ajit Dawal. Now, Mr. Shaurya Dawal can be an accomplished finance prof professional. Ms. Butch perhaps may have been recruited as another accomplished finance professional. It's possible. But given this long list of allegations and issues, does this not raise more concern? The real question to ask is why this hesitation to conduct an impartial, objective inquiry when there are so many skeletons that are tumbling out of the closet every single day, including today's, which is quite astonishing, then should there not be an independent inquiry? As a former professional, finance professional myself, I have received, personally received, several calls from foreign investors asking, what is the status of the market regulator? Can we trust India's securities markets? What is happening with the integrity of the market regulator? Because remember, the strength of any securities market, equity markets, depends on the trust, integrity, and the strength of its regulator. The Congress party wants very strong, robust stock markets in the country. We want foreign capital in our stock markets. This is too important for the country. This is a national issue. If foreign investors are getting concerned and there are doubts about the integrity of India's stock markets because of a series of allegations against the chairperson of the market regulator, is it not in the national interest? Is it not in the national interest? to conduct an inquiry, get down, get to the root of this matter, and resolve it. In fact, that is exactly what we have done as a country. Remember the Satyam scandal, which rocked the markets? That's exactly what we did. And there have been other such scandals. But why, why this hesitation to conduct an inquiry? There are many, many, many documents that are floating around from what is called whistleblowers 
internal employees, insiders. In fact, there is a group of investigative independent journalists who also have a website where insiders are encouraged to blow the whistle and submit documents. It's apparently called IndiaWhistleblower.com where the Congress party has nothing to do with this but this is a group of investigative journalists where and documents are pouring in and there are more and more documents that are coming. So this is not healthy. The real question is who is being protected here? Remember soon after the election results I sat right here along with Mr. Rahul Gandhi and we raised the issue of exit poll stock market scam. There was nothing. The same securities market regulator Ms. Madhavi Puri Butch and Sebi did not do anything about opening an investigation into abnormal trading activity on the one day before the exit polls. We presented evidence and data so who is being protected here? Why this quiet, eerie silence on the part of the government and Ms. Madhavi Puribuj? There will be many more such information and skeletons that will tumble out in the days to come if we do not put an end to this immediately and conduct an independent inquiry. Thank you. Uh, I'm Archis from Business Standard. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, while you've raised questions about, you know, integrity and trust, but that doesn't seem to reflect in the market. Uh, performance it's going up and continues to attract investment second do you think the larger issue is appointment of a private sector person because there was no precedence before precedent before the current CB chief was appointed of a private person uh, and third you know let's assume she resigns or she's asked to leave what will be the next steps first we have to be careful about drawing big lessons from movement of stock prices and what is more important as a former stock market uh, economist and professional I can tell you most what's more important are flows what's called flows flows can be low but mark prices can still go up so let us not get carried away by stock market movements and that would daily stock market movements the fact is that the integrity and the credibility of India's stock markets are under question. There's no doubt about that. And almost all of the, what I've listed today are actually not any political allegations. We did not come up with any of these. These are being reported widely. widely. The second question about is the problem in appointing a person from the private sector or a lateral entrant? Yes. Absolutely not. It is a problem of the individual. Please remember, we've had fantastic people from the private sector, lateral entrance, including the former Reserve Bank of India Governor, Dr. Raghuram Rajan, and other such. We've had many chief economic advisors in the past. So the RBI is perhaps an equally if not more important institution than SEBI. They're both a few kilometers away from each other in Mumbai. So when the RBI is able to function very well, in fact one lateral entrant former RBI governor even resigned in, well he was perhaps the first RBI governor to resign after demonetization and he was a lateral entrant and he had such high standards. So we should not throw the uh, we should not put, pin the blame on recruiting people from outside. So it is really squarely a problem of the individual. On the third, it is not about 
whether she has to resign, whether she has to, it is very, very clear that she has to step aside and allow for an impartial inquiry. That is very, very clear. And I want to be cautious because the Congress party also wants a very strong and robust capital markets. We want foreign investments. We don't want panic in the markets. We do not want foreign investors to get scared. So let's not rush. So the right thing to do is to have an impartial inquiry. We're not saying resign, we step aside and allow for an inquiry. And based on that, let us take next steps.